Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm here with another bunch of awesome filmmakers from the States. We've got Christina Lafsa. She seems to be a regular. I'm not <laughs> sure why she keeps coming back, but <laughs> hey, I like it here. Thank you. <laughs> We've got Jason, John, is it Beeb? Beeb. Beeb. Okay. And we have Adam Steigart. Is that correct? You got it, man. Yes. You really did. Because people <laughs> murder it every time. So thank it's you. Not- it's like my surname. My surname's Chilla, C H I L A, and I get like Kila. I get double L E R. It's yeah. It's um. <laughs> thanks for coming on, everyone. I know it's uh. I know it's late over there, so um. There oh, are a few God. more joining. They'll be coming in late later. But um. Adam, can you give us a quick rundown on basically what you do in the film industry? Well, I direct, produce, write, edit. I have music. I do it all these days. Special effects, that's what I'm really getting into uh, right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm excited about that. But, uh, yeah, we direct, produce, done a couple of films, quite a few films, in fact, uh, at this point. But, yeah, that's basically what I do. I also help produce other people's projects, although it hasn't. it's more far and few in between these days as I'm getting older. But, yeah, I've been, I've been helping out there, too, from time to time. And do you um, do this full time? Uh, I do it full time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, and how do you find so with with obviously I watched I watched um, I watched the first film. Um, Ambus. Yeah, and Christina was saying you made it about twelve years ago. Yeah, yeah. Ambus uh, Ambus Alien Invasion was shot um, in two thousand and twelve. Wow. And uh, yeah, it has lasted the test of time. Now to come full circle years later to do a sequel. You know, Jason and I, we had talked so, I mean, I mean, Jason can tell you too. We have literally talked about doing a sequel since the day we wrapped. We were already thinking of sequels and and all that. Um, So, you know, we, me, when we were, when I was writing the first draft, I've been writing a script for like, since the film wrapped in in 20 and 2012 or 2011, rather. We wrote in 2011, shot it in 2012, and then it came out in 2013. So, it's like a three-year process, man, to make a film. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, so looking back, this is what people, between this film and Prisoners of the Dead, this is the most notable film that I've ever made that has gotten the most attention. Uh, it has a good following with it. I mean, to come back 12 years later to make a sequel, that's got to be saying something. And is it, so It's obviously it's on Tubi, but how long has it been on there for? Oh, that's been on. It's been on Tubi for quite a few years now. It also well, was on. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I would just say long before it was on Tubi, I remember uh, years ago buying it at uh, either Best Buy or Walmart. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming. It actually is in the process of coming out to another DVD release. So um, I'm not sure when that is going to happen yet, but. Right now, we just finished the talks for it and gotten everything basically set up for that. We're hoping that that will come out uh, before the sequel comes out next year. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. And is that um, is it going to be like a, a director's cut, or is it just going to be the original that's already on the streaming platforms? Um, you're talking the, uh, the DVD the re-release. Yeah. yeah, well, we're doing two things, in fact. Uh, we're doing a re-release, which is just of the original print, but we're also doing a special edition, which will have a full new, full new like documentary about the making of the first one that has never been seen before, never been seen before. So um, yeah, that is one thing that I'm excited about. I've seen a little bit of that. That's gonna be fun. Um, and uh, you know we're doing a talk right now, a couple uh, theater owners and I about doing a re-release in theaters for like its 13th anniversary, um, which is coming up in March. So um, we may be doing another release with that. Okay, what what date in March are you doing that? Uh, we don't have a date. <coughs> I haven't oh, okay. finalized that. We're we're just talking about doing it to see if the interest is out there because if the interest is out there and they want it, people want to see it in theaters again, we want to, we want to do that. And we'll have like a Q and a with some special guests and stuff, but, uh, and hopefully Jason would be one of those, those folks. Um, but yeah, uh, we're, we're looking, we're looking at that. And then we're also thinking potentially 
of showing a little bit, a little tease, if you will, to Ombus 2, which will come out next year. And uh, So yeah. has, that, has that finished filming Ombus 2? There's a good chunk of the film that's been completed, yes. Okay. Uh, it is not totally finished. No, we won't finish wrapping until um, June. Okay. And I did know, I was saying to Christina, I noticed that there was a, um, the color, the actual color, like the grade in, in Ombus was was really weird. It was really unique. I'm not sure if that's because it was 12 years ago, but it was like that sort of old, uh, not VHS, but that sort of old grainy type of, it had like a yellowy tinge to it. Was that on purpose? Um. <laughs> or was I'll that just the maybe. camera you had at the time? <laughs> uh, I'll say maybe. Um, <laughs> I, I like I like because of so many different reasons. A lot of the reasons you don't get to see on the screen. You know, there's a lot of stuff. And Jason, you can definitely talk on this too, man. There's a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes of making that film that was just so... It, it was like it's his own story. It honestly is. We were doing conventions... There were a whole group of us that would travel together. We were signing this. I'll never forget. And I think Jason did too. We, I signed my name in somebody's limo on somebody's <laughs> limo. <Yeah>. And <laughs> that was to me something I have never done before. That was impressive to me. Plus, you know, the camaraderie we had, you know, Jason's like a brother to me. Uh, I've known Jason for a very long time. Um, and you know, thick and thin, we have stuck it out and I'm so glad he's still doing films with me all these years later. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of stuff you just don't get to see. It, it was, it was the most fun that I've had on a film set. And I've been doing this for, um, I don't know, 11, 12 years making movies. Um, you said you were looking on my IMDB. I think I got, I don't know, 60 acting credits plus a number of other different things. And to this day, um, I can honestly say, and I've had fun on a lot of different movie sets, but Ambus had a certain kind of uh, magic to it. It really did. Like Adam said, with, with the signings and, and meeting, um, meeting a lot of people, a lot of other actors, the after parties. And I was a little younger there, so I had a lot of fun at the after parties. The, uh, we met the, we... Whole, the, the 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 family. You know, it, it really was a film family. I mean, it, it 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 was great. It really was a great experience. Jason, do you remember we met? Not only did we meet Lloyd Kaufman, uh, which yeah. it's you know he, he's a unique individual, but uh, oh, we Taylor also, Maine. Taylor, Taylor Maine, Maine. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a rumor he's going to be in Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, really? Yes. That's awesome. That's cool. awesome. Yeah. So just think about that. I mean, that we like we would travel to these cons to try to promote this film. So many conventions. I can remember doing so many conventions to, to push this title out there. You know, some of them were good. Some of them you didn't have as much a turnout that you wanted. But anytime we did a massive theatrical release, we've done like five. All of them have sold out. Um, it, it, was, it, it, was a hell of, it was a hell of a ride. It was a really fun ride making Thomas <laughs> for sure. And can, Christina, you could tell us too. I, you're doing. You're on like the second one here, and you're enjoying the the wave of it all too. It is all the behind the scenes help, and you know you're great to work with, and everyone that I've talked to is just fantastic. So, I mean, it's. It's amazing so far. It really is like a family. I mean, everybody is so nice and everybody is so helpful and the ideas that people share and, and things like that. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah. You and I, Christina, we talk like all the time about stuff. Like you throw ideas at me and I, most of them I've used. <laughs> um, I know, helped them with, I helped them design a few character costumes kind of uh, indirectly through making some stickers and it was yeah, nice. It's awesome. It's it's been it's been really good. Yeah, and we haven't and even so, shot our stuff yet. You know, right? <laughs> I was just about to ask that, Christina. Are you actually in the film as well? I am actually in this film. Okay. Nice. Yes. So. And yeah, you looking forward we're gonna, to your role? I am very looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to try did, and do something with Christina. Yeah, I I hope I I hope it turns out as awesome as as we expect. So. So I take it you'd have a stunt double because, you know, like you can't kill Christina off in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can handle some stunts. I'm pretty tough. I may not look okay. like it, but I'm pretty tough. And so, Adam, do you fund most of the most of the stuff yourself or do you get 
obviously external funding and well um, it depends each film each film is different you know um like if we go back to the first film ambus uh you know that one was produced by uh, several people fast forward i've done films where i've fully uh, invested the end of the project or i was just uh, like uh, an associate producer um this one i've invested uh, a sizable amount but we've also done crowdfunding as well so the crowdfunding has been very uh, kind and generous to us i'd like us to raise a little more if we can find it but if not, um, I'm just happy that we were able to do what we were able to do on that service. It, when I started crowdfunding, I did. If you look at uh, Indiegogo, there. If you type in Ambus, you'll find the first one and the second one. If you find the first one, the first one is only like a hundred dollars we raised. Yeah. And ever since then, 2011, all the way till now, I've been like, I'm not doing Indiegogo because you know what will happen? I'll make no money, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to look like a you know this. <clears throat> good director that can make movies <laughs> and then I won't have any money on to, to show that I could do it. So I was like, this would be an embarrassment if I, I failed on this. And thankfully there is just such a good following of people that love this story and want to see the next chapter. So, you know, they've helped contribute and bring it to life and it's, it's coming to life really nicely. Yeah. Okay. I think Indie, Indiegogo is a bit like that. I tried running one for mine, but, um, wasn't that successful i'm running one at the moment but it's through it's a it's through a different crowd funder it's for people here in australia that just want to get a tax benefit but i'm actually putting an indiegogo together for my film version at the moment christina's offered to help um with that as well so that should be get, getting released hopefully next week um because i'll say christina my aim is to get my feature films made if i can in america because when i was looking on um <clears throat> indiegogo i looked up the australian films as well and didn't matter what genre it was, documentary, out of 10 that I looked up, only two of them actually got funding. Um, whereas when I compared it to America, Canada, or the UK, eight out of the 10 got funding. I think it's just here they they, they look at it a lot more as a hobby, more than anything else. And um, uh, to be honest with you, a lot of people don't want to go see Australian films at the cinemas here. They'd rather, you know, um, because we ha they have trouble filling a lot of the seats here. So um, that's why short films I don't mind making here, but if I can get get the funding up i'd rather make the features over there because you know you've got people like yourselves who um i guess if the story's good you'd be guys be willing to um to possibly look at making something like that as well so that's my aim yeah i'm i'm getting to a point in my career personally where i'm i'm looking for the retirement film you know the the film that it puts my send off you know and uh like I have two films, Ambus being one of them, Ambus Two being one of them, and another one that I'd really like to get made. And if if that other one doesn't happen, it, you know, whatever I guess you could say. But uh, I want Ambus Two to be the best film I've ever made, ever could make, or anything mm -hmm. like that. Like um, this one's this one's special to me. This one's very special. <laughs> and whereabouts are you filming that? Uh, in Buffalo, New York. Oh, so just one location. Uh, two. It's going to be two. Okay. But yeah, only two locations. But when you see the film, you're not going to realize that it's only two locations. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you mind if I play, play the trailer for the first Ombus? Yeah, go for it. It's one of my favorites, uh, to be honest. Let me, just, let me just try a share screen. Sure. Oh, uh, here we go. It's, where is it? Oh, yeah. I haven't watched it in a good minute. To be honest with you. All right, guys, so this is the trailer for the first Ombus, which was done in 2012 uh, by Adam, and they're actually filming the second one now. So if it plays, enjoy. might have found a new species here. Mark, you need to tell me what in the hell is going on. Please. There's an alien bacteria from another world. What do you want me to say? That the world's being invaded by aliens? Calm down. What happened? 
Thankless job. And who the hell are you? Another beautiful morning in a quiet town. Oh man, do you, yeah, bravo, man. Do, do you, Jason? Do you remember when we did the uh, the big like push for the trailer release? Uh, be more specific. I think so. We did this huge build up for that trailer release. I mean, there was so much anticipation for that trailer release. Like the first time the trailer was released. It got like yeah. five thousand views over a weekend. Yeah, I do remember. I also, I have to, I, I have to add one thing really quick. You asked Adam about the locations, and he mentioned Buffalo, and that there was another one. The other one is actually space. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give I'll it go. away, though. Hi, Alexander. Hey, hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Hey, Alex. Yeah. I'm glad Hi. you can make it. Somebody. Yeah, I can make it. I stepped outside. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I know where you are. Yeah, you know where I'm at. <laughs> oh, geez, man. I'm smoothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Alex, is he's the man when it comes to it. He he was Mr. Gray in the original uh, Ombus, and we get to see uh, Mr. Gray in the sequel again. He comes back for it with a little bit of a twist this goes, so I'm excited about what it's got for us in store. Right, it's not too often I get to come back and play a character, but I'm happy to return to a character to expand on what transpired with him over these past, was it like, what, 12 years? Yeah, yeah. Man, 12 years. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> and, and when we did our table read uh, in January, he was phenomenal, and I loved it. So it was Oh, great. my God. Yeah, Alex, the voice, man, the voice. <laughs> oh yeah, you 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 know, by, by now, Mister Mister Gray has you know, you know, fully uh, adapted into whatever it was he was adapting into. So it's just all types of craziness. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and I I love working with Alex. He, he was he was Alex was. I would say my this is my words, Alex. You were disappointed okay. that you didn't become the nemesis because he wanted to be the nemesis. I did in the first film. <laughs> I got to, I, but 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 I technically technically I kind of I still am the nemesis. You got a little bit of nemesis in you, yeah. You did the voiceover for the original nemesis, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm like technically I'm still the nemesis. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll give it to you. But but the reason why I wanted to say this was because I said to Alex, I said I can't put you in makeup, man. I need to see your face. I need you as a person because Alex, he has like this wide range of talent of acting, uh, and you probably got it by now, Christina, just seeing uh, him. And obviously, uh, is it Ant? Is that what yeah. is it, Anthony? Anthony, Anthony, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, it's it's one of those things where uh, uh, you just you you can't take your eyes off Alex when he's performing. And kudos to you, sir. Oh, you're gonna make me blush, and you might not be able to tell. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. But, yeah. but you know, you know, it's it's just I'm just wow. It's it's not too often that you 
find something that you enjoy doing that you let me let me get into the lights so you can see me. Man, whew, I had to smile to find myself. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so I can make that joke. Y'all can't make that joke. So uh <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Buffalo's Eddie Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> listen, Alex, be quiet, everyone. Don't, 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 let's see it. Don't do me. Maybe turn to Eddie Murphy. You want every, I'll keep you Eddie I will give you Eddie Murphy just right now. Just right here. Just right. Just do what I do. Just do the Eddie Murphy thing right here. Just, yes, 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 some beautiful, yeah, it's just the beautifulest people I've ever seen, ever, ever, ever. But anyway, <laughs> so, you know, just be <laughs> a, a clown. Just being creative. I like I like creating and I like being able to get on set and just and just play, you know, and it's it's magical because you get to see like people create their characters and just become that world to bring into life. And that's that's what that's what makes acting so much fun. Acting is pretty much like just pretend, but you get paid to pretend. <laughs> when you do projects, you get paid on. Well, in in indie films, sometimes you get paid to pretend. That's that's, that's you heard. I was like, when you do projects, you get paid on because indie we've, film we've, goes we've, either we've, way. We've paid our dues. We paid our dues, so we get paid more than we don't. But when we were starting off, uh, a large pizza was payment sometimes. We like you yeah. going to eat. Oh, you're getting it. getting a credit of your film that that was just made. As part of payment as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. IMDB. Yep. Like IMDB pizza and a milkshake. Mm. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got a milkshake? When did you get a milkshake? milkshake? I didn't get no milkshake. They must have had a budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, 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 that was the meal. It was like, hey, I want you to read the script real quick. I was like, oh, man. This is nice. Thank you. Alex and I, <laughs> we haven't worked together in almost 12 years. I don't yeah. think we've done a project in 12 years. A lot of people, like me and Jason, we just wrapped up on a project two years ago, or four years ago now, the Rift Evil Monsters. But uh, mm. Alex and I, we haven't we haven't worked together in quite some time. And when I was starting off in my youth years, Alex was part of those core people. So was Jason that like believed in me and were doing projects when there was no money. You know what I'm saying? When mm. I'm like, hey, could you give us some money? Because we need your help here. <laughs> um, both of these guys, you know, I would take care of them as much as I possibly can throughout my yeah. professional career if I can. And uh, I don't ever I, mean, I don't ever remember a milkshake, but there was plenty of pizza. <laughs> yes. Listen, pizza. My 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 favorite Adam story is Angel of Death. He's like, Alex, in this one, you know, I want you to have your shirt off. I'm like, okay. I'm <laughs> like, when do you want to film this? He's like, blah, blah, blah. I look at the calendar, I'm like, what I so I did it, I did it. I got in my angel of death shape in like a ridiculous amount of time. I was it. It's gonna it's gonna sound so cliche, but it is so true. I was legit eating like kidney and beans. Me, me, and you, tuna. me and you had a me and you had a fight scene in one of those. Uh, <laughs> that infamous yes. shot <laughs> and a chainsaw. I mean, I mean, kidney beans, tuna, brown rice, chicken. To get the set, he's like, "All right, that that that." Now this is after I've like floated in like the Hamburg Bay for like five hours. <laughs> he's like, "Okay, we're, yeah, we're, I remember this. We're gonna fight, we're gonna film your fight scene after this." I'm like, "All right, what's for lunch?" I walk over to where lunch is. They're grilling burgers. I'm like, "I've been <laughs> a burger in like a month and a half." There's pizza. I'm like, mm. it's, it's always Alex, like that. The fight scene after you eat, it's always like right? that. Alex Crazy. and I were shooting uh, part uh. of the, <laughs> that, that film he's re referencing is now one film called Homicidal Vengeance. Uh, mm -hmm. It's great grindhouse film. But if you, we were shooting a, uh, a segment of that film, which uh, was called Angel of Death, and we were in this church shooting it, and we had a oh smoke my. machine. Do you remember the smoke machine? We I had do. This smoke we had the smoke machine going, and it filled up the room with smoke. And guess what? <laughs> the alarms in the building went off. off, and we had the fire department showing up. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, was that? So did you say homicidal maniac? Is that what it's called? No, homicidal, no, homicidal vengeance. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, ha I had that with a um 
a short film we're making a um uh one called Fear of the Mind, which is a a, fan, a Batman fan film based on Scarecrow. Ooh. And we oh. um, and we uh did it in a we used a high school and same thing in the toilets we had the smoke machine set the smoke alarms off so the fire department had to come out and reset the fire panel because the head the teacher they didn't have the keys or anything so it was so in the uh in the final cut tried to put the music over it and dull the the beeping as much as we can and there's no there's no uh dialogue in that part just because yeah the no- noise was too loud but hey you do what you gotta do yeah <laughs> That's film, you got, oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. had me a Batman fan film. Somebody give me a link to this when this is done. I got to see this. <laughs> yeah. I'll get. I'll send Christina the link so you can watch it. It's oh, actually in a. Um, it's actually in a festival that my my film was in. The version won the award. It's in the same festival, so that's next week. So we'll see how we go. Right. Um, you can send me a link to that too. <laughs> we'll do. Yeah. Um, so Alexander, that. do you do it? Do you do it full time? With acting? Yeah. I was for a while. Then I stopped to be a dad, but now <laughs> I'm a. I I think I'm I think I'm like John Wick. People keep asking me if I'm back. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm back. <laughs> you can't see me, but I think I'm back. Go over this way. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> so here's Hold so up. I I asked this question I think on the last one. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think who would win? Uh, John Wick or the Punisher, if they were to be brought oh, together. In a fight. I don't know what what ver- what version of the Punisher because yeah, I, I love you. Um, I love that you. John I love the Dolph Lundgren Punisher. I don't care what anyone says. The Dolph Lundgren Punisher is the best Punisher movie ever made. Thomas <laughs> King's pretty badass, but, but he's the, sorry, but, but he's the dirty Punisher. I, oh, I love you, not not the Thomas Jane, <laughs> not Thomas Jane, the other one, the one the series. Uh, what was his name? Um, Josh Bolin. What? Listen, there were there were okay. No, no, so here we go. The, but listen, there are four Punishers. There are four Punishers, and they are as follows: You no have point. the OG eighty nine ninety Punisher, which is Dolph Lundgren. You have like the two thousand, the early two thousands Punisher, Punisher, which is Thomas Jane, John Bernthal. The, then you have the Warzo Punisher, which was no. Ray Stevenson. And then yeah. for the series, you got John Bernthal. That one. That's the one I'm talking about. You got four Punishers. <laughs> that yeah. is a very interesting question and a very interesting matchup. I, personally, I'd have to really think about that. Wow. Right? Like, series, series, series <laughs> Punisher. Like, John Bernthal. <laughs> yo, he's yeah, like, he's going in. Yeah, he's all in, man. He's They're all in. Him, him versus John Wick, yeah, that's all in. So I want to do a yeah. fan film. You got to make a choice, Red. I don't think anyone owns John Wick, but I know Marvel owned the Punisher, so that's why it would have to be a fan film, which is a shame. Oh, yeah. but... Ooh, ooh, that would be so good. True story. I don't know if, Alex, you know this, but the Homicidal Vengeance is actually based off of a Punisher comic. Not that it was taken from it, not by any means. It was inspired by a Punisher comic. Um, and. I Forever, which, I've been. Which one? Welcome back, Frank. Which one? I'm intrigued. You know, you know, I'm a comic book nerd. Come on, man. I, I will have to tell you at a later time because I can't remember the title of it. Okay. But it was my favorite, 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 favorite Punisher version, and um, I'm like, I was inspired. I was reading this scene where he was he walks into this place to go after the mob, and they're all like doing dinner, right? It's just a big dinner, and mm-hmm. they all have their guns, and he just wails at them. And I'm just like, that would make a really good adventure story if we could figure out how to do something like that. And uh, so it's actually, there's like a little segment of that in um, Angel of Death. And uh, yeah, that is like one of my favorite, favorite things. I, I, uh, I keep telling Adam like, Hey man, I got like, I got, I got another rad page left in me. What's good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The film has many different titles. One time, well, for a while, it was called Black Guy on a Rampage. But that's like, get, that's like when it was the shorts. <laughs> yeah, that's when it was the shorts. But then to get like politically correct, we had to adjust it only because I didn't want us to offend anybody. Um, but, uh, you know, people still watch that Black Guy on a Rampage and they send me messages or fan mail about it. Um, Alex, Alex and I were at, um, we were at a red carpet event where there were two films to be played and only one <laughs> of the films played and it was ours 
<laughs> and it was, the other film was like the other film was like a family friendly film in in the oh other, my and goodness was like so wrong yeah. like it was so this is like this, like the audience that was at the media art center for the premiere of this film was like there was like good like sunday morning church family channel tgif people <laughs> and i am on this screen mowing through people with the chainsaw <laughs> with, with the, the chainsaw, chainsaw. Yes. and uh, you just hear <laughs> You just hear loud Jesus, what is this? And I'm just like, I'm just like just I'm just like sinking in my seat, feeling so bad. Like I'm just like I like I've like warped the minds of these fragile little children. But but the, why, why I was setting this up is because after the film was screened, a kid came up to Alex. Remember what the kid said to you, Alex? Oh, what did he say? What did he say? It was around about where Alex he came up to me. He was like afraid to see Alex because he thought Alex was gonna kill him. Do you remember? You don't remember that, do you? Because I, because I, I, oh, and I was just like, and I was just like, no, nah, that's like I was, I, well, I was, I was like, I was that was just pretend, and I was like, that was just that was just that was just me being somebody I'm not, and he was like, <laughs> how? And I was like. Then I, then I, I think I, then I do like the rampage voice or something like that, and I like I turned into rampage real quick, and then I turned back into me. He was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah, but you know, we the, it's just the the place. I always say the places filmmaking will take you. I've mm -hmm. gone to different countries for filmmaking. I've gone to different states for filmmaking. I've mm -hmm. met thousands, literally thousands of people. Um. And some of the best ones are on this chat right now, you know. Making, yeah, thank you, Alex. You know, you're just you're just that guy. And of course, oh, Jason yeah. and Christina. Uh, Everybody, like I yeah, feel, I'm, I feel like there's new friends every day. In that, like the yeah, host, I'm, hi, host. Yeah. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Anthony. Hello. Anthony. Anthony's amazing, I, I, guys. <laughs> I, I think I we tell. took over. The I think we took over this podcast. I Anthony. do. That's, that's what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of things to talk about, and you guys are more interesting than I am. So just keep going. Anthony, Anthony you got you got to do me a favor, though. I don't know how long this podcast is, but I, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna request this now. Before we leave, you got to do me one favor. What's that? You got to say, "That's not a knife. This is a knife." Oh no! You got to do that for me. Ah, uh, okay. I got to get. I got to hear some crocodile just, Dundee. Just remind me before the end of the show. I will. Okay. <laughs> what part of Australia? I'm actually in Perth, Western Australia. So we just had WWE Elimination Chamber here last weekend. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Nice, 50, nice. I think it was 53,000 went there to watch it. So, How far is that from Brisbane? Um, I think we're about a four-hour flight from Brisbane. Oh, okay. Cool. But we're... So basically, they were saying that you can fit all of Europe into the state that I'm in in WA. That's how, how long and how big. I think you can fit three or four countries into our state. So that's crazy. Wow. wow. We're the most isolated city in the world. And you have a lot of dangerous animals because I watch a, a lot of YouTube yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. That's why I don't go to the beach. Besides the fact they roll me back in, it's. Um... <laughs> so it takes four, uh, let's see, flying to, to Brisbane is about four hours. Yeah, okay. roughly, give or take. Um, <clears throat> so if we go to Adelaide, it's a two, it's about two hour flight. Melbourne, I think you're looking at about four and a half. Queensland is around four. Most of them are around the same time limit time, except for Tasmania. We just don't go there because they're all inbred. So <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, it's actually detached from Australia, and, and yeah, so not many people go to Tasmania. Sorry if I offended yeah. any Tassies, Tassies here, but you know. I, I like why like why do y'all hate on Tasmania so hard? Uh it's just because like so we call it overseas because it's detached from Australia, so it's like you got to scan your passport to get there, and it's just a, a joke that we all make. Okay, um, yeah, they call us W, so we're called uh, the abbreviations for Western Australia is Wait a while, so uh, WA, so we're called Wait a while because Melbourne and all that got all the infrastructure and everything before we do. Like they've all got movie studios. We're now getting one built. Like I don't know. 20 years later, so they call us wait a while. So everyone's got their own, like, uh, oh, so they're like they're Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> 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 I've never been to Buffalo. 
Yeah, all of our <laughs> studios are closed man, up before they even get open. It's it's sounding sounding mad like where you're from, right? Just <laughs> <laughs> Because we're just now getting a studio, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Wow. But the problem with our studio is that no um, independents like us will be able to use it because it's designed mainly for the, for the big films to come over. And then you got to try and get on there as either a, a PA or what. So we wouldn't be able to afford to use the sound stages or anything like that. So it kind of it, – it, it's good in a way that it will bring – films here but it, it sort of goes against us being able to use it as well so we'll just keep on doing what we do here and that's, hopefully that's when you buy a bunch it. of green screens and lighting equipment yep. and just keep on just making yourself films exactly yeah. right there was a star a, my direct my director for a version he made a star wars fan film in in a friend's shed they just green screened the whole shed and then just uh made that in there so you got to have a lot of really cool uh locations in australia though, i imagine like to right even if you went out we to like had, gorilla film or if you got permission, you know, in the, in the woods or, you know, in the outback would be awesome. Or you, you got to have some cool looking locations. I would, I would have imagine. you seen Wolf Creek. I definitely heard of it. I, I seen the trailer. I didn't see the movie though. Yeah. So that that's filmed in, I think, um, I think it's Melbourne, somewhere in the Eastern States out in the gold fields, but we've got, um, sorry, out in the, out in the, the desert there, but we've got the gold fields here and they've made mystery road was made here. Um, there's quite a few films been made here where they go out to the outback and um because all just red dirt for where i worked was a 16 hour drive from my house and then it was um all just red dirt all the way through every community that we we're doing so we drive 16 hours work for two weeks and then drive back again so i, I remember years ago being at a film festival i think i was in a movie being played in it and it was a buffalo film festival and there was a maybe a half hour short that was filmed in australia no idea what the name of it was it wasn't a horror movie but it was a fairly high budget indie short mm -hmm. and i remember leaving the film festival and that movie from australia left the biggest impact to me it was it was just it was phenomenal um do you know what it was cool i i you know what i haven't thought about it until we're talking right now but but now that i'm remembering it i remember like the impact it had on me and i i just i thought it was really really good no idea what it was called though but so, Random, so most, of, most of our films um, get funded through an agency called uh, Screen West. So they, they're with uh, – we have Lottery West here. They help give grants. Um, so we've got Zach um, – I can't remember his surname. He's making a new one now with one of the actresses from Star Wars. But they, they look at your um, – they look at your, your – your, when you send through a um, proposal, they look at it. <clears throat> and then they they say yes or no, but it takes quite a while, and there's a lot of hoops to jump through and and things like that. They you know, so it's I've tried a few times, but they don't like horror or thriller really. They just more like to fund what they they sort of want. So that's yeah. fine. We just keep doing what we're doing. But I was but like as I was saying with my features, I don't think here in in Perth or Australia anyway, because I don't. The other thing is we don't have like Adam. You're able to get Jason and Alexander and and other people just to come on your film, whereas for me, I have to get them try and get them from the eastern states so for me to get any name actor like sam worthington or jai courtney or someone like that they're obviously over overseas now they're from perth but the only people i can get is someone like say um claire holt who played rebecca michelson in the vampire diaries or the originals um she's in brisbane daniel gillies who was elijah in both those films so for us to get name actors we have to try and get them from the eastern states and it gets quite expensive with, with we don't have smaller like smaller name actors that we can get that will help sell the film so that's something we're up against here as well um and it's just people just don't really want to um like working around it now trying to get the availability of people you, you cast them they're getting paid for it, but then like they they sort of double book or they go on to another project and i've had to do multiple projects where i've had to either recast or just try and work around it for three days and it just gets to a point where you know it's just we're just going to recast the people because it just gets too hard you know i, I mean i mean um, film make, filmmaking is not easy it, it's incredibly no. it's incredibly hard and mm. even if, you know whether you have a named actor in there or someone who's never acted a day in their life or somewhere in between just just getting a film made is a huge huge accomplishment <laughs> and people don't realize that you know because i mean you people are people are idiots on social media you know they're they're all no. about insulting and this and that and you know bad comments and it's like well let me see your movie because exactly. it's exactly. not not easy exactly you know because like 
Like I've I've worked on a few movies that are like I've worked on a movie back in 2010 that just now saw the light of day in like 2023, but people are finally seeing it, you know. And that's the thing. That's 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 part of the creative process. When you're when you're doing it indie style, that means just sometimes it takes a long time. Sometimes in between the projects you want to work on and finish, you're working on like five other projects because those are ones that gonna help pay some bills real quick so you can go back to finish mm-hmm. on your like your passion project. Yeah, you're, you're talking about uh, you're talking about binary samurai. How awesome is that? I gonna am. Be? How, how awesome <laughs> is that going to be? That's when I first got into film. You, you were acting in that already when I had first got my foot in the door, and you're actually one of the, one of the first people I met. Uh, one of the first, you know, a handful. And I mean, how awesome is that going to be to see that done and to look back on yourself acting ten years ago in a movie put together that you haven't seen yet? I mean. That's that's gonna be an awesome feeling. I know I I'd, I'd be excited to see that. It was fun. Like I I've seen it because it was because I saw like the rough cut a long time ago when I had to do some ADR, and then oh, the, whole, the whole thing. Well, not the whole thing, but like my parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to see the whole, to see the whole movie. <laughs> but then, cool. but then, the, but like last year, I like I saw. Before before it got I saw I saw the I saw the whole movie last year, and I was like, "Wow!" And what I was getting ready to say is like I, I get mad because like when people make when people make fun of like platforms like Crackle or Tubi or any of those other or any of those other ones, like man, don't you, don't make fun of those platforms because or even YouTube. YouTube. Or even YouTube, because like yeah. people are making things and they're getting them out there, and people are watching them. Like, like some some of them are like like super low budget, and some of them you're like, yo, really? Somebody with like an iPhone and a dream made this? Okay, party <laughs> up! Like, <laughs> let's see what else they can do. Let me follow this person's career because they got me intrigued. Well, part part of the part of the film festivals running here, they actually have a category for iPhones. So, oh, sorry for mobile phones. So, if you you just make a film on your phone, and you can enter it in. But, I mean, <clears throat> kudos to anyone that makes a film. I've had a guy that I've got to review a film for from America. He made it on a thousand dollar budget it's on Tubi, and he played six out of the eight characters. And it's just because wow. it's it's what he had to do. So, I've watched it, and obviously, it's it is what it is for the budget. But it's been released, and. Yeah, and Jason, like you were saying, you get all these keyboard warriors that sit there. I think a lot of it, half the time they're bots, but um, they come on and they say, oh, what have you made? Or they give it a one star. And then when you reply, show me what you've made, they've got nothing to show you. So, you know, exactly. it's, yeah. and, and they don't, and they don't realize what goes into it. Obviously Adam and Christina and Alexander, you'd all know, like you get on set and it's just, for me, the, uh, the film set is my second family. I know everyone, I can go there. I, I, mm-hmm. I try to run a fairly relaxed set. We have a few laugh, laughs and jokes and, and a lot of people have said they've been on other sets where it's just like like a cemetery. You can't say anything. You can't make a noise. You can't do this. Can't do that. And and everyone's got their own way of running it. But um, I think you get I think you get on a lot better and get a bit of production made if you if you can all have a, have a good time, but also get in and, and get it made when shooting needs to be done. So exactly, um, there's a lot of different ways that people make films here and. But Alexander, like you're saying with the platforms, Tubi's starting to become quite big now. It's um, a lot of people are making a living from their films being on Tubi from the from the profits. So I, I I know Netflix is a big one, but Tubi's starting to become. And I think the reason is because it's free. They make their money from their ads, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think because of that reason, that's why a lot of people are picking that over Netflix. Yeah, I will say, as somebody that has distributed films, though, Tubi is becoming very. Um, What's the phrase I want to use? You're strict with okay. the films they accept. It wasn't always like that. When Tubi was starting off, it's like submit them whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't like, uh, thankfully, I have a rapport with that company because now I don't. I don't think I think they wouldn't be as selective with certain titles um, now. But like Ambus, like I said before, Ambus always generates something, some type of buzz. Mm-hmm. So it's always been good for us, but. Like uh, Tubi is obviously one of them, but uh, you know you have Voodoo, which I think mm-hmm. is becoming Fandango or 
uh, yeah, Fandango. I think it's becoming Fandango now, or yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Fandango. It's merging uh, with somebody. It, it is merging with somebody. And then, um, you know, we I was joking about this recently on a different podcast. The first film, first Ambus, this is going to date us here, was actually <laughs> a, Net, a Netflix DVD. It was wow. never streaming. Wow. It was never streaming through oh, Netflix. Shit. But you could get it from, you could rent it from Netflix. <laughs> it was a Netflix DVD. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I amazing. forgot about that option. Yeah. I remember. I it. forgot about that option. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about yeah. it. Until you just put it down. Um, wow! I remember so, when they gave block, Blockbuster Video the option to buy buy Netflix, and they said no. Nah, they they, they like, said no nope. because it, yeah, because they made all their money from the returns. Like if people return the videos late or the movies late, so they said no. And then uh, that was that attributed what to their mistake, downfall. What a anyway. mistake that was! What a mistake that was! You know what though? I so so miss. I don't know what you have in Australia, but over here, Blockbuster Video, Video Factory, Movies Plus, Hollywood Video, Family Video. I, yeah. I personally so, so miss the experience of going into those places and renting a video or two videos and spending the night at a friend's house and seeing this awesome 80s or 90s movie for the first time, as, you know, as a young person. That whole experience is lost that, uh, you know, people growing up in this generation got their own thing. But I'm telling you, if, if they can go back in a time machine and experience that. Man, I would spend hours walking those aisles. Yeah, listen. I used to, I I used know, to work at a couple of them. We had we had Me Blockbuster too. here. We had Video Easy. We had Jumbo Ooh. Video. Um, and then they then they bought out Laserdisc, and that didn't last very long. That oh, that was another Laserdisc. And that, <clears throat> yes, it was like a big CD that you. I record. know what a laser disc yeah. is. I was just like, remember, I am older than I look. I was reminiscing. <laughs> you know what though? Can I just say? I think it's terrible what they are doing now with uh, media because what they're doing with media, physical media, they're trying to, like, I could tell you, I don't know if you have Best Buy over in Australia, but nah. in the States, we have this big company called Best Buy, very popular mm -hmm. company, electronics, all that. They are discontinuing all their physical media for film. And, mm -hmm. you know, things are going now to just to go to Amazon or going to Walmart or whatever have you like that. It's like yeah. they're trying to kill physical media so they can keep everything on streaming and make more money off of it. And that's not right. You, you know, you know what the really scary part about, about that is, is that it jeopardizes movie theaters. And man, yeah. I, ho I hope not. But if movie theaters ever totally fold, drive-ins are already almost gone. Luckily, we got one mm -hmm. kind of close to us. But mm -hmm. um, that, would, that would be horrible to, to see theaters go. And I know a couple of them have. Yeah. Well, we got a store here called JB Hi-Fi, Adam, like you are saying, and they still have physical media. So I can go in there and they have shelves. They have action comedy. Or I can go into the horror section and they've got all the films there. They still do all the box sets. So that's I can go there and purchase them, which is good. And I don't think they'll ever get rid of them because there's a big demographic here that likes, still like to collect um, records, uh, <clears throat> you know, merchandise, uh, the physical media. I'm, I like physical media. I've got DVDs on shelves behind me. My director... Um, he's just put a movie up on Juby called Thorns and Thistles, End of the World, which I was a co-producer on, and he's releasing physical copies of that. Uh, a film that I did back in 2017, the first one I produced, Black Ghost, is up on Juby. It's not the best. It was done for five grand, but um, it was the first one that I jumped into I'm producing. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. And uh, that's it. And Black Ghost is no relation, no nothing to the color of the person. All right, Alexander. Oh, just I was going to gonna say, know. did that star Alexander? <laughs> 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 No, no, no. Like, Don't you no. tease me. But no, listen, it'd, it'd, no. It'd have to be transparent to be the ghost part. But that's uh. Well, listen, listen, you keep talking, man. I'm like, man, do I need to get my passport, come over to Australia, and just hang out, buy some physical media, and maybe make a movie or two? I will. Well, my, my aim, I was speaking to Christina. My aim is to come over there and hopefully make something over there with you guys. So, because I'd like oh, to. Oh, uh, most definitely do that. I'd like to hang out. That would be awesome. I'd like to hang out with different creatives. And my, my plan was to try and do a tour because I know quite a few other people. There's like Jay, Jay Horton, there's the Jalbert brothers, the Mahal brothers, that sort of thing they do. They do crowdfunding and make movies. I wanted to do a tour and hang around with different filmmakers and maybe hang out on a set for a couple of days and things like that. So that's that's my aim. Just obviously working it out is going to be the harder side of things because, you know, we've got the time difference and, and that type of thing. So You should just come in June. Come, yeah, come in, in June. Come in June. To I was just about to say together. that. You could be part of it. Come on, man. You can make it. 
When in June. You can, get, you can get one of these nifty things if you can see them. Oh, you can't see them. I can see uh, it. It's a little. Um, it's because you got your green screen. It's because you blurred green screen on you. There you go. Uh, well, let me. Uh, can I turn that off? See, it's like it's not my award. You can't see it very well, but that's the award that I won for a version. <laughs> oh, I can turn it off. Oh, oh, lens. Check it out. Yeah. Look, look at that. Those look so good. These are. That could be you. This Jason already got that it. That could be you. This could be yeah. you, and it even has like a. It even has like a shot in New York film. You know, you could even. You know. And, and how long? So how long are you shooting for in June? A week. Well, we're Pretty shooting much. sporadic in the beginning of the month, uh, Jason and I. Um, but we're shooting one whole full week is really the whole thing. Okay. And that'll be to finish the film off, yeah? Yes, that'll that'll bring the film to its uh closure. And how so how many weeks before that have as the rest what did it take for the rest of the filming? Um that's it. So ten days of filming all together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um nice. this film is very it's very CGI heavy. Very yeah. CGI heavy. Um, so a lot of green screen work, uh, blue screen work is going to be done on the project. We have a great makeup artist. The original makeup artist is one of the original makeup artists is returning Phil Beath. Um, for the longest time, I was trying to get Jill to return Jill Jovic, who is also part of that team in the first film. But, uh, you know, she has since had children and, it, uh, unfortunately had a separation, so she's just been so busy, she hasn't been able to make any uh, a commitment to it. So I'm sad by it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and still hold out maybe one more time with her. But um, yeah, I really feel without having her part of the project, it really like it makes me sad because Jill, being the makeup effects girl, this room that I'm in right now, she would sleep in this room for weeks on end when we were shooting that film because we were doing the film for six months. The film took she six was, months to do. She was definitely a vital part of the first one. Most definitely. Yeah. Along with Phil. Yeah. Most yeah. Definitely. Of course, along oh, with Phil. Yeah. So it's really kind of sad in a sense, but, uh, you know, we still have Phil Beath, who's very talented, very talented. And uh, he's bringing his uniqueness back to the project. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Expect a gross, fun ride. That's the best that I can tell you with no chocolate syrup this time. <laughs> I, I'm just glad. I'm just glad that uh, 10, 12 years later, whatever it is, that there are so many people returning from the original. Mm. There's quite a right? few. Yeah. And I would the say that almost... the, the fact they're willing to do it as well, you know, because obviously yeah. everyone, everyone gets busy and, and things like that. So for the fact that you're able to get them back is really good as well. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah. sign. It's a good sign. Yeah, it is a very good sign. It's a family that was reunion. one of the big things. That was one of the big things with uh, when I proposed this thing and I said, hey, if we're going to do a sequel, it has to be 100 percent faithful to the original. But I want to make it a little cleaner, a little tighter, a little more ambitious. And you, you look at that film. We had flipped over cars and stuff like that. How do you make the sequel bigger than that? How do you do that? And I think the story that we're, we're going to be telling and we are telling is so big. It's so grandiose. And it's made on such a small scale, small scale. And it's going to look like a million dollar project. I'm telling you, by the time it's done, um, everybody here on the group, unfortunately, Anthony, you haven't seen anything yet, but we've all, I've shared things with all of these folks and they've all seen clips and they can tell you we are making a blockbuster. I'm not making a, like a, like a special film where it's just like, um, you know, maybe it's like an art piece. No, not this one. This one is a blockbuster. I want people to go see it and just have fun with whatever they they take from the story and just have a great ride because it is a fun, thrilling film. Uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see it. And, <laughs> and I will I will endeavor to try and get over there uh, sometime if it is June. Um, it's the, June. Uh, June would be awesome. It is man. June. It would be awesome. Yeah, totally. I'll totally. have to work out. I'll have to work out the flights and accommodation, but <clears throat> we'll see how we go from there. Um, now, Adam, what's your take on ADR? Do you like ADR, or, or are you not a fan of it? Well, I'll tell you this: the last film I did, um, I did original audio, so we did on-set mics. But then I had everybody after they were, they were done shooting uh, go off stage and go into a separate room, and then they mm -hmm. did audio again. So they 
literally took the same lines they just spoke and went into a room and did them again. So I will tell you that that's how I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, directional yeah. mics, of course, but uh, um, ADR, but ADR on location at the time. Yeah, okay. That And, I mean, uh, I don't know. A lot of people here don't like doing ADR. They just think, oh, we'll just go with the audio that's on set. But like you said, a lot of the time you have cars in the background or you have, you know, something happen where you can't do it. And I've done that a few times where we've gone into a separate room either to get at my Foley or, or just get the dialogue redone. Um, because I think it's a lot of it. We try to do ADR for one film and they're just trying to match up, you know, the dialogue with what they're saying on the, on the video. They, they had a lot of trouble doing that. So they tried to do it without the monitor on and it just – it became a lot, a lot harder than it, than it actually should have been. So, um, I actually, I actually had got called in uh, last summer to do some ADR. I was in a movie, um, fairly good movie. Uh, it was about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar budget called Heartbreak Falls, and I'm uh, it's an ensemble cast and one of the main characters. But they had uh, they had mics attached. You know, it wasn't like road mics or anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, long after filming, I got called in. I had to do some ADR. Luckily, uh, the sound people, everyone on board was definitely knew what they were doing. But, you know, it was just something where and, and the guy that I had the scene with, it was a really like back and forth type scene. He had to do his entire dialogue ADR. <laughs> and yeah, right. we, we, we watched the movie. You would never know. But I, I just imagine that's got to be frustrating as hell when you're like, man, the audio is not good. No. Nah. Well, we um when we do when my director was doing thorns and thistles, the sound he shared lavs on everyone. So the receiver was taped down where the socks were, and she just had the lav taped to the chest. And we got mostly clean audio from there. There was little a few pieces bits and pieces here and there, but that's mainly how she did it with that. So, um, but I think that's one of the main the main things for the film. You have to have good audio. The video, I guess, in a way, you can get away with a little bit, but um, you can't compromise on audio. Um, yeah, it makes yeah. It breaks it. That's if, a hard one. If the audience can't hear what you're saying, they're going to lose interest pretty quick. Yeah. 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 I've been there before where I've used I've used all different types of mics. I think uh, Jason, we used the uh, on uh, on mics for Horrific Evil Monsters, where we did this film Fang a couple years ago, and we had boom mics, and then you know we did Ombus where we had a directional mic. I think it was right on the camera. Um, it, it was like a boom. Well, not always, but it was like an extended boom that attached to the camera. So, you know, I always used to like having audio that ran right to the camera. That was always my mm -hmm. thing. But as you mature, you learn some new techniques. Yeah. I'm just going to sh quickly show you, share, show you the poster that I've got for a version. Sure. Um, just okay. we've got to find it first. Hang on. Where are we? So this is the poster that we've done. It's a bit cut off. Oh, There's some other stuff at the bottom, oh, but that's that looks really cool. So basically, oh, yeah. a version a version is a film about um, five people who each have their own phobia, and yeah. um, <clears throat> they're all university students, and they're lured to the professor's house on the premise that they're going there to be cured, but um, they end up being locked away where they have to overcome their phobias to get out and work with each other. So a little bit, I'm trying to get away from the sore-esque feel, but um, the, all the phobias are real. So there's like bad noises, the dark, blood, water, insects, that kind of thing. Um, but I didn't want to insult people who actually have phobias, but I still wanted to keep it in that psychological thriller sort of genre. Um, did you did you write it? I, no, I came up with the concept. I had it written for me. I'm, I tried writing scripts, but I, I can get the first the start and the end, but I just can't fill in yeah. the middle. Like I was talk, tell, giving, I sent Christina an idea I had for another film that no one wants to make here because they think it's a little bit too, too, um, not to, too horrific in other words to make it and, and the theme of it. So I think it's awesome. I loved it when I read the synopsis. So, yeah, so I've got to get the rest of it written up. I've got to get it written up, but I just, I've got the start and the end. I've just, I'm just trying to work out the middle, but, um, yeah, so that's ba and so version's basically one location. There's a couple, a little university scene and and a few bits and pieces, but that's basically the premise. So you're like the guy with his fear of the dark. He ends up with his eyes stitched shut, that sort of thing. So we're taking it Ooh. to a little bit, a little bit more of an extreme. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what we're hoping awesome? to get the feature. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's why we're hoping to get uh, I mean, it, it sounds promising the poster looks cool really dramatic looking uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll send um, I'll send Christina the the proof of concept that we did that won the award, and um, it's just one scene from the film. It's just a dining room scene, but you get the idea from there. Um, and so, yeah, I hope that's why I'm putting an Indiegogo together to try and combine that with the funds that we've got and a private investor to hopefully get it made. So over here, if and then a, Anthony, if you get a chance, uh, I don't know, Christina, if you saw it, but if you get a chance, Anthony. Check out the film Fang that Jason and I did. Um, Fang? It, yes, it will turn your stomach in scenes. In fact, the opening scene will turn your stomach. Where, uh, where is that available? Oh, everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. It's even On in TV? stores. If, you're, if you have Walmart and stuff, it's in stores too. Okay. You can get it offline. Um, well, uh, it is on Tubi. It is on yep. YouTube. It is on, but don't watch the YouTube version because it we have there's nudity in it and we had to censor yeah. it. So yeah, okay. Don't there's do also a, there's also a documentary, isn't there? There is a documentary is that, about making the film. Is that yeah. on Tubi? Yes, that's on Tubi as well. Yeah. yeah. So nice. I'll tell you, Fang, Fang is about is it vampires? Werewolf. 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 Yeah. So oh, it doesn't yeah. get doesn't get long in the tooth at all. No, that's just, yeah. <laughs> it's, no, I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out. But um, now it sounds like you guys are do some very interesting projects and um i've got one that's actually being written at the moment called the cursed and it's um it's about a paranormal investigation team that go and investigate an urban legend but they bring it to life so that's actually um which is what i want to film over there again i've sent christina the the uh, synopsis for that as well so um that's what's being written at the moment and the one i was talking about before that's sort of like hills have eyes meet um House of a Thousand Corpses, sort of something like that combined. So it's sort of up up there with some of the the stuff that's going to happen. So sounds like you got a lot of good ideas. You just got to film them, though. Yeah, right. yeah. That's why I'm, that and that's why I think they have to get made over there because there's just no real interest in making them here, or people just don't want to be involved in them. So even things like you said, Adam, like nudity, for example. So if people if people here are getting paid. They, they don't want to do it just a lot of it's got to do with the fact that they're with partners and things like that but like it's oh we write scenes in there like no nah, i can't do that it's like well if you're in hollywood you wouldn't be able to say no you know what i mean it, yeah it's well, kinda... that, that's adam is po- it's adam is constantly trying to get me nude in his films <laughs> yeah i tried to get it i get try to get an ass shot numbers too yeah, he that really still happened. That may still happen, by the way. He really did. I told, really did. I told him you haven't paid me enough milkshakes for that. <laughs> I, I did tell Jason that we were going to revisit that. I did uh, tell yeah. Jason you're going to revisit that. Yeah. So you're not doing a, you're not doing Brokeback Mountain too then? Not not that no. extreme. Uh, no, sweet no, no. sweet fantasy baby. <laughs> No, but there's a purpose just... for it. It's tasteful type stuff. And you know what? It may not even be in the film. I'm just saying it was an – creatively, <laughs> I don't mind showing that type of stuff. I, if it's a male, it's a male. If it's a female, it's a female. I don't pick one way or the other. Um, if it's right for the story, you know what I'm saying? Um, the nudity in Fang was right for the story. It, yeah. um, I don't want to spoil that, but there's a – it was right mm-hmm. for the story. Um. But not all my other films have had nudity. That's the only film I've ever had a nudity nudity in, and uh, it was a very quick shot. But it's a good shot. It's a whole good. It's, there's a reason behind it, and and yeah, it's it's tastefully done. Awesome. But I do remember. I do remember when the actress went off set, and she because she goes falls on this like mat uh, on the ground after getting ripped her clothes ripped off. Um, she when she goes down, everybody was worried about her versus the other actor. Who had like this? <laughs> who had like this blood that was literally glued to him for some reason, and he couldn't get off this chair. So, <laughs> oh my God! So everybody's aiding this this actress, and no one's taking care of this poor fool. And I'm just like, oh. So we, yeah, that was that story. Yeah, nice. You know who the, I'm talking um, about, right, Jason? Yeah, Christopher, right? Yeah, Chris Burns. Yeah, Chris, yeah. yeah. He was, was glued that just- to that chair. Yeah, was that like it, a, a prop failure, or was it just? Uh, it was a lot stickier than what we thought was going to be. I think the makeup artist, who happened to be Phil on that one too, um, used our hero blood, which is a different combination uh, of what his normal blood was. And mm-hmm. I made this poor guy sit in his whitey tighty. 
on this chair. Oh my god, man, it's yeah. fucking gross. If I don't mean to swear, what? but I did. What? Whitey tidies. Sorry, you can swear on here. There's no kids. Well, I sent I sent him a message one night at like midnight, and I said, "Hey, Chris, uh, I want you in this film. How would you feel about being in your only underwear and socks, like high rise socks?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, sure." Not thinking that I meant anything by it. What <laughs> comes to, and then you know, obviously more and more conversations. And he reads the script, and he's like, "So you really do want me in my underwear?" I'm <laughs> like, "Yes, sir. Yes, I do." Um, but then he was trying to like clean up his body for like stage prop. And he mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Nair, do you know yeah. what Nair is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Nair? He put Nair all over his chest and then he tried to blame it on me. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know what the hell Nair is. <laughs> <laughs> Try to blame it on me. I'm like, go just shave. I don't know why you didn't shave, man. It just, he just wanted to look what? Or wax. Yeah. But he Nair? wanted to be smooth, Adam. He wanted well, he to was be smooth. smooth. He was smooth. <laughs> His skin was bright red too because it like scorched him. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nair does not that. care. Nair does not that. care. <laughs> see, people don't see these stories, but when That's working right. on a film, we <laughs> collectively will see those stories. You know. Adam, did you know that? Did you know that Alexander has been talking for a couple of years of writing a script, a boxing script, and me and him being the two guy, the two opponents. I didn't know that. Oh, maybe maybe you got another directing. Uh, oh, you're gonna you, bring me out of retirement. You, you could be assistant director on it if if we ever uh, make it. We got yeah. we got to try to make it before we're both walking with walkers. I got <laughs> I got I got I got outlines for days, man. I got outlines for days. Yeah. That's how my brain works. There, there's <laughs> yeah. a funny story, and Jason, please make sure you tell us your input on this. But there's a funny story. Uh, when we cast Jason for Ambus One, um, he was originally the script was written for a teenager. Mm -hmm. Jason came in, his audition blew us away. So we did, um, yeah, of course, he came in for a minor role and then he became like one of the lead roles. And um, you know, we we're like, well, we'll just figure it out. We'll make him because Jason was we looked younger <laughs> we'll at the figure time. It out. <laughs> and we'll, you know, I'm like, he could probably pull off 25 ish. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it just made it the older boyfriend type of thing. Um, it was Luke and, Perry. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> wait, what did you say? <laughs> you were Luke, Luke Perry. Perry. Oh, that, I take that as a compliment. Yeah. Well, good. He, 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 passed, he passed away, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. did. Yeah. In his jacuzzi. Yeah, that's really good. Oh man. But he he had this like he has this jacket that he puts on. It's a Bulldogs Metzberg jacket. It became oh, hold on. Iconic. Yeah, hold on. Go keep, keep talking. It became iconic. <laughs> oh my goodness. The whole ongoing if he joke puts, was if he puts on this damn jacket. Yeah, it, it, it the like somebody's was, uncle reliving his glory days. Listen yes. back in my day. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> Yes. It's it be, it is going to be in the that's sequel. The he's talking about. <laughs> that jacket. This yeah. is the original jacket yeah, from the original Ambus that I was know. invited to me at the last after party. <laughs> yep. Does it still fit you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. But we're going to have it in the sequel now too. We have oh, this whole so idea good. for the sequel uh, with it. But the ongoing joke is he just never takes off the jacket because it's good luck. That was his, like, there's a line in the film that Jason says, this this jacket always brought me luck. And then he'll find it in the sequel. Oh, my God. It's exciting. <laughs> I, I I actually Still suggested I, I actually suggested that scene in that line because I said there's got to be, he's wearing the jacket all the time. They're going to think he's in high school. Something needs to be said to make the audience realize that, no, he graduated a number of years ago. And that's how that scene came about. Because I'm like, Adam, I know I look younger than I am, but... I can't play a 17 or 18 year old. And then, right. yeah, that's how that scene came about. Yeah. 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 Nice. And fast forward 12 years. Now we're making a film. And you're putting the jacket back on. And it still fits. Right? <laughs> 12, 12 years later, here we are playing our characters again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alex's nice. character, and I can't tell too much about this, or we can't share too much about this, but Alex's character gets a really cool upgrade in his mm -hmm. wardrobe. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to, to see that. We might need to do a fitting, by the way, Alex. I didn't even think about that. I, probably. I am working out currently. Oh, are you? I am. 
we're gonna need to see that chest in this one too, and you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have that. There's some pumps in there, then. So we got an uh, yeah. amp. We got a chest. Uh, okay. It, there's so much CGI in here. Just CG my ass onto Alex's body with his bare chest, and there you go. It'd be like your dream come true. <laughs> and getting Nate a sponsor. You. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, being a filmmaker I, I, is just, or just being in film, we all can agree to this. Is just, it's there are great moments doing film. They're just great moments, moments that you won't relive. And how often can you tell somebody that you know I was in a movie? You know. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. Well, and not just that, I like to get as much behind the scenes footage as I can, whether it's stills or video, because I even released on uh, my director's YouTube channel, there's a whole behind the scenes of us doing a location scout um, mm. while we're setting up setting up the, set, the the set because people ask what it's like. And so I like to release it. And um, so I might have an, someone extra there just with the camera just to purposely film all that because you can throw that on a DVD or you can throw it on, um, you know, on the film if you wanted to. And I think it's actually interesting to see how much work because that version when we did the short, it took us three days to film eight minutes of footage. So, you know, people are like, why does it take so long? And then you just, you know, they can see with the process of what goes into it. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. All I, right, I, guys. I, well, I, I, gonna... I, totally, I totally agree with, 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 the, with everything you said there. I'm a big fan of documentary and, and behind the mm. scenes. So I totally feel you on that one. I'm going to let you all go because I know it's go, getting late there. And but, um, but before we go, we oh, need to yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. What's going on? Oh, you that. That, that's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> yes. And well, um, find, us, find us on the social medias because we'd love to. I will. I've just written your names down now and I'll send through uh, Christina the links to some of those other ones. I am making a series of short films as well. So we're starting filming one of them next month. It's, um, about a, a um, kitsune. So um, the, the the film's called Tales from the Outlands. It's about a supernatural police force, and each Ooh. character is different. So we start with the kitsune, then we're going on to the, the vampires, and then we've got um, some werewolves and, a, and a, a wizard and stuff in there. So we're doing all short stories of, of them, then we're putting it all together to make it uh, one called Tales from the Outlands. So we'll see how we go with that. But we're starting to film one hopefully next month. So Good luck. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, nice. Uh, Thanks very much, and thanks, Christina, for getting everyone on. Um, and I'll add you on, on socials and send some links through. Awesome. All right. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot. Good night. See ya. Bye. Oh, nice. Oh.